Hey guys, welcome to the fifth annual, I can't believe it's that long already, Read Your Bookshelf Challenge announcement. For the past five years, I have been creating this reading challenge. In the last couple years, it's gotten a little bit more complicated. For 2025, we are heading into the simpler life for the year, which I'm excited about, some nice simple prompts. So originally when I started this reading challenge, it was a way for me to read books off of my shelf. Now I am getting to have a smaller physical TBR and that will become a little bit less of a priority for me. I have always said though, that you do not actually need to read a book from your shelf for this challenge. If you want to read a library book, an ebook, borrow a book from a friend, it doesn't have to be a like, physical book from your own shelf. That's just what the title is called because that's how it started, but it's kind of evolving over the years. Like every year, I am going to be hosting a giveaway for this reading challenge, so I always give away a $100 gift certificate to your book dealer of choice as long as I can purchase the gift card where I am. So if you want it to be Amazon, that's fine. If you want it to be an independent bookstore, as long as I can purchase it online for you, that's what it's going to be. Since the challenge doesn't actually start until January, starting in January, I will have a link in this video description where you can start filling out the form. I'm excited to share all of the prompts that I've picked for the year. I picked out a book from my books as well as like a potential option if this book is available then it might be one that I read. I also hope to give some book suggestions to do a video recommendation list before the month comes but we'll see. I generally start that and then I totally fall off the wagon so we'll see if I actually continue. So what we are doing this year is every month has a one word prompt. I've generally tried to keep things fairly open so that you can read whatever genre you enjoy anyway, but this year it's even more vague. Every month, like I said, has one word prompt. This word could be in the title, um, like an, a word adjacent to it could be in the title. It could be that you find this thing on the cover or somehow it describes the book. Like it's very loose this year as long as you can find a way to make it fit, it's gonna, it's gonna be good enough for me. So my thought was January often is quite cold and a little bit depressing as we are in the depths of winter here, but nothing to look forward to because Christmas is over. So the prompt for January is beauty. Now this could be like a beauty and the beast inspired tale or retelling. It could have the word beauty in the cover or in the title, uh, there could be something beautiful, the cover could be beautiful, anything like that. I decided to, for my possible options here, I have a book, an ebook that I think is really beautiful. It would involve me reading book two before this book, but I find the cover for The Garden Girls stunning. So that's potentially an option for me in January, assuming I can read book two before that. But take this idea and run with it. If you guys have ideas on some of these prompts as I'm sharing them, I would love to hear your ideas in the comments because that might spark some inspiration for some other people and even for myself. Okay, January's beauty. February, we're doing size. Now, this could have a size word in the title, you know, huge, large, big, small, little. Um, it could be a size of a book. I was originally thinking like February's a short month so you could pick a smaller book but if you really want to read a big book that month that works too as long as it's based on size. So I have two on my shelf. I have these little pocket, they're every man pocket poet books. Tiny little book. This could be an option for me. This one's Poems for Travelers and it's very thin so I could do this for physical size. I also have on my shelf five little peppers and how they grew so I could go for size in the title. Either works, figure out what works for you. For March we are heading into time. So it could have the word time in it, it could be a book that has time travel, it could have like a clock on the cover or something to do with time. One of the options on my shelf is facing the dawn because that is kind of a time. I actually I read this in my try chapter 
a few weeks ago and really enjoyed the first chapter. So this is definitely an option if I haven't read it by the time March comes around. I'm always interested to see how you guys use the prompts in the form for the giveaway. I always have a spot where you can tell me the book that you used for it and kind of how you made that prompt work and I love seeing what you guys have done. Okay, April is when flowers kind of start here. It's really more like me here but we'll go with it. Uh, so flowers is the prompt for April. So the book could have flowers on it, it could have a flower word in the title, it could be like you know daisy or chrysanthemum or whatever, anything to do with flowers. It could be a book about flowers. I know I've bought my mom some like coffee table books about cut flowers before and stuff like that. One on my shelf is Jane Austen at home. This kind of has some like embroidered flowers on it so this is an option for me for sure. May is my birthday month so I wanted to do something that I, I always like to pick something that I like for that month and I got ideas from my patrons for the read your bookshelf challenge. Every year I like to get some suggestions for them from them um, and one of the things that came up over and over again this year was like favorite color, favorite author, favorite everything and so I thought for me why don't we just do favorite and we can all use this however we want a favorite something. So yes it can be a favorite author. The book or the spine could be your favorite color, it could be a favorite series, um, it could have like your favorite trope. Any way that you can use the word favorite in there totally works. I'm very curious to know what you guys are thinking as far as favorite goes. I was looking at my books and I just thought, well, how about favorite author? I love Dorothy Gilman's books. They are not my favorite covers though. They're so very retro. And so I have Caravan. This one is a standalone. She wrote the Mrs. Polifax books, which I love so very much. Uh, but I thought I would not pick one of those. I can't share a Mrs. Polifax book in every video as much as I kind of try to. Uh, so this is definitely an option for me for favorite. I really love birds. So for June, we are doing bird or birds. Amanda Cox has a book coming out that has to do with like a birding society. I don't know when that's coming out, but that would be an option for me. On my physical shelf, I have Morrigan. This is the beginnings of the Remnant universe. This is like the prequel to the books. And there is a little bird on here. So I thought that might work. Uh, if you guys need a book for this one, one that I would recommend that I loved is Susie Finkbeiner's The Nature of Small Birds. Oh, I'm forgetting the title. Whatever it is. Love, 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 love that book. Um, I actually am getting my daughter to read it now because I was telling her how much I love it and she's really enjoying it as well. July, we're going to do royalty. So it could have a crown on the cover. It could involve the words king, queen, prince, princess. Anything to do with royalty on the cover would work. Um, one I have on my shelf right now is The Queen's Resistance. This is the sequel to The Queen's Rising. So The Queen's Rising would work as well. Uh, I don't know why I haven't like just finished this duology. It's sitting there. I really enjoyed book one. If I only had more time to read. Unfortunately, my channel name is a complete lie. I do not read all day. I just kind of wish that it was reading all day. So after royalty, we are going to space. So this could be anything set in space. Um, it could have space stuff on the cover. So it could have a planet or stars or a rocket, anything like that. A book that I, another series I need to finish, um, is The Children of Consortium. This is book three. Guardian. This is set in space. There's all sorts of spacey things on the cover. We've got some planets and some stars and like I said we're set in space so definite option. Um, space travel. Any, anything would work. Oh this book is so beautiful. I also could have used this for the beauty prompt because I love these covers. Okay so going from space now we're going to travel. So this could be anything with a road trip, any kind of vehicle on the cover, um, any, anything to do with travel. I always have a travel itch. Um, I just shared, reshared a meme from um, like the UK, I think it's like UK Explorers or something. And it said, for anyone Christmas shopping, I'm a size window seat on plane tickets to Scotland. Scotland, England, yes, please. 
anyone want to buy me a ticket? Um, so travel. Uh, one on my shelf is The Alliance. This one I think actually is a dystopian book. There is an airplane on it, so that's why I was thinking it would work for travel. There's also a buggy because this I think is kind of all the power goes out and we're set in an old order Mennonite community. I've been curious about this book for years. It would be nice to finally read it. So definitely an option for me. There's there's quite a few options out there though. October I thought would be a good history month. I kind of also aligned this with Victober. So if you just want to read a classic, something that was written decently in history, I mean all books are historical in the fact that they were already written, but I'm thinking a little bit farther back. You can read like nonfiction, um, something with the word history in the title. A book that was given to me by Charlene is The Secret Diaries of Charlotte Bronte. I'm very curious about this because this is a kind of like fictional story using um, actual historical information like Charlotte Bronte's diaries. Uh, and the Brontes really, really fascinate me. So definite option for me here. November, we're gonna do food. So we're gonna have a food word in the title, food on the cover. A lot of mystery books have that, um, historical books. Some of them, some, some genres, I think will be a little bit harder. I found one on my shelf and this would be a better one for December because it's got the word Christmas in it, but it's the Christmas mouse and it's got some food. Honestly, I cannot tell what kind of food that is, but whatever. Um, it's got food on the cover. I've read a surprising amount of food books in the last while. I read The Quiche of Death, kind of thought it was meh, and the, oh, the Secret Book and Scone Society. Those have food in the title and on the cover generally, so lots of options there, although you might have to read a little bit out of your element. You could read a cookbook, I mean, if you if you want to, um, but some of them are a little bit more like actually interesting and have some information instead of just recipes. Actually, that kind of makes me think of um, the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. That one would totally work. It's got potato peel pie. Uh, they There is someone that for their book club reads sections of a cookbook and they're all like starving because of World War II. Uh, so that one would work as well. For December, we're going frosty. So anything cold, wintry, that kind of feel. I feel like a lot of Christmas books would also work for this because they often have some kind of like cold element on them. One that's on my shelf is Winter, White and Wicked. I started this on audiobook a while ago, didn't love it. I think I'm gonna try it again physically, but it's got the word winter. It looks very frosty. It would very much work for this prompt. And that is all. That is our entire 2025 for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. I would love to hear if you guys have some ideas of what you're going to be reading. If you want to be joining in, I would also love it if you would share this video with others that are book lovers or that you would like to inspire to be book lovers. I know a number of people use the prompts I do each year for their book club. Everyone either picks their own book based off of it or they pick a book together based off of the prompts. That's a lot of fun as well. So thanks in advance for your excitement and for joining in with the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. I'm excited that we are hitting the five year mark. Here's to another five. Thanks for hanging out with me. And like I said, the info for the giveaway will be in the description starting in January. I hope we all have a great reading year.